The last is yet to be heard on the President Muhammadu Buhari's decision to withhold assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021, as some aggrieved members of the Ninth Assembly accused the Attorney General of the Federation, AGF, and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, of misleading the President. Chairman, ad hoc committee investigating federal government's abandoned properties across the country, Honorable Ademori Kuye, warned the AGF to desist from any action capable of destroying the existing cordial executive legislative relationship. Honorable Kuye, who frowned at Malami's forceful and bitter verbal attack on the parliamentarians, dismissed insinuations that the National Assembly was insensitive, discriminatory, and supports insecurity as alleged. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Malami Abubakar, has said that the National Assembly's interest in passing laws is solely political in the wake of recent passage of the Electoral Bill as he seeks to justify his current advice to President Muhammad Buhari to withhold his assent to the bill. In his diatribe, he posited that the lawmakers are only concerned about their political inclination and that their legislative activities, especially with the electoral bill that was passed, is insensitive, discriminatory, and supports insecurity. While acknowledging that the minister is entitled to his opinion, Honorable Kuye stressed the need for the National Assembly to resist any attempt to destroy its credibility and the existing relationship between the legislative and executive arms of government. We must resist the attempt to pitch the executive against legislature while denigrating the synergy that has existed between both arms of government. If the impact of lawmaking is only political, as Mr. Malami has posited the landmark petroleum industry bill, that has eluded many administrations since 2003 will still be in the dustbin of executive legislative bickering. This singular achievement of the Ninth Assembly under the joint leadership of the Speaker, Honorable Femi Gbajabiamila, and the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan, has opened up petroleum industry and made the country's oil and gas sector competitive globally as the accruing benefits have continued to unravel. Other extractive industry initiatives have been backed up by legislation that have pushed to the institutionalized transparency, accountability, and local ingenuity. While at it, the laws governing corporate and allied matters got extensive overhauling by this assembly, and it has since revolutionized businesses in the country and impacted the ease of doing business. These laws are apolitical and have affected all Nigerians. Apparently, the minister has also forgotten that it was earlier in the year that a new reform policing architecture was made possible through the Police Reform Act 2021 that captured the yearning and aspirations of Nigerians for a better, friendly, and more robust policing after the debacle of the hashtag NSAS protest in November 2020 and its attendant social political upheavals. If the Malam Malami has forgotten the broad impact of this few legislation and his tagging the National Assembly legislative functions as political, he needs to be reminded. Perhaps he has forgotten his rudimentary social duties, or how would an Attorney General of the Federation summarize that an electoral bill that allows for all members of a party to have a say in selecting who becomes their party flag bearer, being described or supporting insecurity and discriminatory for President Mohamed Buhari to sign into law? What are the cost implications to parties like APC who recently had a nationwide membership registration exercise? Or how does APC, for example, reconcile the minister's cry for expensive direct primaries with this recent membership drive? How can direct primaries be expensive when the party already has databases and mechanisms in place where its members can vote online and from the comfort of their homes? Or is the APC admitting through the minister that its recent registration of members is just a waste of resources and an avenue to just buy time for the caretaker committee to remain in office. Also, is the Attorney General of the Federation saying democracy is not 
participatory anymore as he seeks to scuttle the will of various party faithfuls and exclude them from having a say. With these developments, direct primaries should encourage all parties to have a digital online registration of members and make provisions for online voting for registered members. It's obvious that the minister is pondering to the political elites, especially the money bags who have concluded that more money will be needed to get things to go their way with direct primaries. Also, it is not impossible that he's thinking of his own vaunted gubernatorial ambition in his state. Let him test his popularity with the party loyalists in his state first and not seek to come in through the back door by denying Nigerians the next step in the evolution of their democracy. He challenged Malami. Recall that the Speaker, Honorable Femi Gbadabia Mila, after receiving the President's letter on his decision to withhold assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021, disclosed that the Parliament would not throw away the bill just because President Buhari declined assent of the direct primary clause. According to him, when we return in the new year, we would resume our efforts to reform the electoral system in our country. I will do it together. That is what the Nigerian people expect of us and will do our duty for God and for our country. Whichever way it pans out, we must not throw out the baby with the bath water and must deliver a credible and enduring electoral system to Nigerians. Every law is a living document and as long as it has breath, it must survive. Honorable Gbajabi Amila said during his valedictory speech. The Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, has been asked some serious questions here that he needs to answer. You know, recently he released a statement um, that he actually backs President Mohamed Buhari. Obviously, we know he was part of those who advised him because Buhari, while he was um, giving reasons behind him, withholding assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, stated that uh, he received um, um, advice after consultation received a lot of advice so we know malami is one of them and being um, a strong cabal in presidency as well we know he's one of them he came out openly to now make a statement that is actually backing president muhammad Buhari not to sign the bill giving his reasons talking about um, the expense cost and um, wise and um, um, all that that will uh, um, cost the country or lead the country into he's now been asked these serious questions to give answers I hope he has answers for all of these questions. Well, guys, leave us your take. Thank you once again for staying tuned. Please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again with more updates. Bye.